got? We only got 10 minutes. Let's talk about chapter 6 is normal probability distributions. So we're still talking about probability distributions. We did binomial ones. We just finished a bunch of binomial ones, two state ones. Now we're going to do normal ones. First off, the standard normal distribution. A lot of, a lot of sections here. Standard normal distribution, which is bell-shaped. Let me show you. Look at that. Aren't you glad we're not doing these by hand? Doesn't that look terrible? That's right. No, you won't need to do this by hand. That was, that, that, was, that was discovered by Mr. Carl Frederick Grouse, one of the greatest mathematicians ever. Anyway, on we go. Bell shape. So now we're talking about, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. Remember normal distributions, bell shape? Remember how pretty much everything that occurs naturally is bell shaped distribution? Number of, you know, the way, if I grabbed a bunch of leaves out there off a, off a tree and I weighed them all, There'd be some average, and there'd be some big, heavier leaves, lighter leaves, and they'd be bell-shaped in their distribution. Anything occurring naturally. Men's shoe sizes, right? I've done this kind of thing before. So on we go. Standard normal distribution is where you put zero in the middle, and you make sigma, sigma is the standard deviation, one. We'll talk about that. Let's, let's move on. We can find probabilities. We're going to use our calculator. Here's a bone density example. A bone mineral density test can be helpful in identifying the presence or likelihood of osteoporosis. The result of a bone density test is commonly measured as a z-score. We'll talk about that. Population of z-scores is normally distributed, mean zero, standard deviation one. So these test results meet requirements of a standard normal distribution. Let's take a look at an example. Graph of bone density test scores shown in the figure. Find the probability that this person has a bone density test score less than 1.27. Okay, so what, what does that mean if you have a bone density test score less than 1.27 if these are Z scores? So now there's a table. We're not going to be using that, though. We'll just be using our calculator. But they have Z tables and... That's what I did back when I was a stat student, and what I taught 15 years ago is looking up things on tables. So we'll just be hitting the buttons on our calculator is how we'll be doing it. So let me show you. So example, bone density test. So the probability that a randomly selected person has a bone density test below 1.27 is 0 0.8980. That's because, see this 0.8980? is the area to the left of that spot. Now, what does that even mean in the real world? That's the main thing for us, right, is keeping it real. That means that 89.8% of, of the population has a bone density score below 1.27. So this person's got good bones. They've got a good bone score. Most people, almost 90% of the population, has a lower bone density score than they do. That's what that means. So probability percentage to the left means the percent below you. The percent has a lower score. The percent that has a lower score. All right, let's keep moving on. Bone density is finding the area to the right. So if we go to z-score of negative 1, negative 1, this gives us 0. 0.8413 to the right. Now I'm going to show you how they're coming up with these. We'll do it on our calculator. But right now I just want to give you a feel for what they're talking about. They're going to ask you, they're going to give you a spot on the normal curve. We'll use our calculator and we'll find the amount to the right or left. It's kind of like what we've been doing. Greater, less, that kind of thing. We're going to have a function on our calculator that does the same kind of thing. Greater, less. Actually, it's going to be a little easier to use. You'll like it better. You'll just put it, what you're going to do on your calculator, we'll do this next week, or no, we'll do this Wednesday, um, is you'll put in this Z value and you'll put in like infinity here basically. And you'll say, from here to infinity. In fact, yeah, let's, I don't want to give you another calculator thing, confuse you with the other thing. Let's just move on. So, um, moving on. Interpretation. Because of the correspondence, right, yeah. So, 84.3 is, is above. So, all right, and, that, and that's the lecture. <laughs> let's, let, let's do a couple homework problems and we'll call it. We've only got five minutes. 
So look how easy the sum work is. Here's number one. Which one's a normal curve? Let's see. This is great, isn't it? You want a lot of those on the test? Yes. Yeah, there's, All of it. There it is. <laughs> All right, number two. Find the area of the shaded region in the graph. Can you see that? Want me to make that bigger? Yeah. Here, I'll draw it here like this. How about? So they're giving me a bell curve, and they're putting this back here. They're shading all of this, and this is Z equals negative 1.14. All right. Yeah, I've already given you the the other one, so I'm I'm going to stop there because I'll just I'll mess you up if I give you another function. I'll wait to do that till right before the test. I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I thought Eddie would enjoy that one. No. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's stop there.